welcome everyone to the latest episode of the Kronos stream. Right, my name is Jay, and I'm from the Kronos Labs Partnerships team. And welcome to the Kronos stream today. All right, so firstly, just a recap of what the Kronos stream is. Right, Kronos stream, it's an AMA live stream where we invite various projects that are building on an ecosystem. The founders of the projects are representative of the projects to come on board to share their latest updates and happening uh, regarding their project. Right, so just a reminder that all updates shared in the Chrono stream are meant to be only informational and not financial advice. Right, so if you can see the slides here, there are two QR codes uh, on the screen. Right, on the top left is a QR code where you scan, you'll be able to see uh, the Chronos Chain YouTube channel. Right, so if you are there, please give Chronos a subscribe. And on the bottom uh, left corner, it's another QR code which links to a questionnaire form for the stream, right? So if you have any question for the uh, speakers today, right, feel free to scan the QR code, which will be available throughout the stream, right? And uh, send in your question. So for today, uh, I have four very special guests with me. Right? Firstly, we have Ken, uh, who is the head of Kronos Labs. Uh, next, we have Charlotte, who is head of innovation programs at Kronos Labs as well. Um, then we have Matt, who is a director at Minted Network, right? One of the top NFT marketplaces on Kronos. And last but not least, we have Blue Oats, right? Co-founder of Argo Protocol, uh, one of the you know, more prominent protocols on the chain itself. All right. So um, later, all of these guests will be giving a quick introduction about themselves. Um, but firstly, we will start off with Ken, right? Who will first be giving uh, latest updates on what has been happening on Kronos, right? What are the exciting stuff, right? And I think the first line is, has been something that, uh, you know, really exciting news for the past few weeks, right? Kronos uh, Galileo upgrade version 1.0 has been completed. Um, Ken, what do you have to say about this, right? It was a huge uh, milestone. Uh, yeah, so we've mentioned this um, V1 upgrade, of the Kronos mainnet a few times on this stream uh, as we introduced uh, the features and improvements that this up upgrade is bringing. Uh, one of the main ones being the introduction of a prioritized mempool, which makes the network even more resilient in periods of high demand uh, and high transaction throughput. Uh, but I think Having already talked about the features, I'm not going to repeat them here. Uh, there are multiple blog posts that talk about this. What I wanted to highlight more is the fact that um, the upgrade process went uh, extremely well. Uh, I think the downtime was uh, you know, less than an hour for the network itself. And then by the time the whole infrastructure caught up, with the blocks, uh, you know, everything was over in a, in a few hours. Uh, so I want to thank, of course, uh, all the network validators uh, who contribute, contributed a lot to this smooth upgrade. Uh, and, you know, I'm really excited that um, everyone involved was very, was very professional and uh, diligent uh, and um, that the upgrade went so well. Uh, yeah. In, yeah, so um, we're, in order, you know, for those who are interested in a technical deep dive, um, we're scheduling an AMA session uh, with some of the protocol engineers next week. Uh, so we'll announce more news about that. Yeah, it was a huge upgrade. Uh, and many stakeholders were you know, touched upon from the chain validators to all the projects having to you know, inform the CrowFam community that the chain will be down for the upgrade period. Right? And I think very happy to see that everything went smoothly and the chain was upgraded successfully. And, uh, and onwards to the second you know, update, developers news. Um, so we wanted to cover, uh, since I want to cover like the different infrastructure partners, what they have, uh, their latest updates today. So you know, anything that you want to cover here? Yeah, I just wanted to highlight that uh, thanks to uh, you, Jay, and um... Uh, Ella and uh, you know, all the efforts that are going into 
ecosystem and partnership development, we improving uh, the value proposition uh, to developers and the way that they are supported when they build on Chronos. And so I just wanted to highlight three uh, recent developments that if you're an application creator or developer, uh, you should definitely know. Uh, so the first one uh, is uh, the WITNET grant, uh, the WITNET grant program. So WITNET is an oracle uh, that has integrated Kronos a while ago. Uh, they had announced their grant program back in September, uh, but just recently they announced the third grantee um, from the you know, among Chronos uh, developers, you know, as part of the as part of the Chronos uh, subset of their grant program, so it shows that uh, if you're a Chronos developer, your chances of getting the grant uh, are significant, uh, and that this program is still alive and well. Uh, so I encourage you to check it out uh, uh, with at Witnet. Uh, secondly, we announced. Uh, an integration with Tenderly. So Tenderly is a very uh, versatile uh, and um, robust tool that smart contract developers can use to simulate uh, and understand everything that happens in their smart contract, uh, operation by operation. They can also uh, use that tool to uh, monitor contracts already deployed on the network uh, for bugs, um, and finally, uh, if you're, for example, a wallet uh, developer, you can use Tenderly to simulate transactions that uh, your users are um, signing in their wallets. You can simulate the impact of those transactions in terms of changes of balances and changes of approvals. And that's very helpful uh, in order to detect uh, transactions that may be fraudulent or may um, uh, lead the user to sign more, uh, to sign you know, to sign away more rights and approvals than what the, the app is supposed to to obtain. Uh, so, if you're a developer, I encourage you to check it out. Uh, and finally, uh, so Rockex, which is a provider of cloud infrastructure on Kronos, uh, so they, they are providing a JSON RPC endpoint. So they just announced their Lunar New Year campaign. Uh, with some uh, benefits for people who sign up for RockX plans uh, between now and I think the 5th of February. Uh, so again, check it out. I think it's great to see that all those infrastructure partners are making efforts to support Kronos developers in those difficult times. Right, and this is really important, right? Because as a chain, we want to you know, provide as much technical support for all developers, right? So be it grants, right, from the Oracle service provider, be it a better like develop development platform like Tenderly and a more stable, you know, node service provider like RockX providing credits. I think ultimately is just to improve the developer experience. All right. Moving on to the next point. Uh, one of the very exciting launch that we saw last week was MMF uh, Mad Max, which is their decentralized uh, perpetual protocol. I think for the past few quarters, you know, Perpetuals was something that has been a gap um, in the Kronos ecosystem. And with MMF launching their Mad Max protocol, right, uh, seems like you know, the traders on Kronos chain is very happy right now having this Perpetual protocol to trade. Right, so what, what, what are your views on this, Ken? Yeah, so I, th I think it's part of a broader theme that we're seeing play out in the coming year on Kronos which is that um, the trading, the crypto trading experience uh, is going to become more and more similar uh, to what you can expect uh, when you're trading on a centralized uh, exchange, right? So the idea is that next generation DeFi protocols uh, will aim to offer some of the features and experiences that uh, are comparable are as, you know, at least as good as what you can get from a centralized exchange. So that includes um, you know, the, the ability to, uh, uh, to place uh, limit orders, which VVS has already introduced a while ago. Um, and uh, with the, the launch of uh, Mad Max, which is a GMX fork, we're uh, now able to trade per perpetuals and there are lots of other derivatives uh, and order book-based 
uh, DeFi protocols that I think are going to uh, come into the Kronos ecosystem in the coming months. Uh, and so that, that will really participate um, in the maturation of the DeFi vertical. I'll be honest in saying that. So I know that um, MadMex is a GMX fork. Uh, I haven't checked out yet exactly how it is similar and how it is different. And so I think anyone who's looking at it should first un uh, try to understand what's the same, what is different, and from a security standpoint, what that changes. Um, but I think it's definitely worth checking out. Right. Uh, yeah, the disclaimer is super important. And I think with all perpetual protocol, right, it comes with higher risk due to you know the availability of leverage, right? So always use with, with caution. Right. And we, to the last point, right, um, portfolio and tax trackers. Uh, I think we, we recently went through the tax season and maybe some still going through. Uh, yeah, we can, anything that you want to share about this? Yeah, no, it, it was exactly uh, like you said, it's more <laughs> of a public service announcement. Um, I spent part of my end of year holidays just trying to make sense of my crypto accounts, especially nowadays that there are uh, people who, um, more and more people who send zero value transactions to your wallets. Uh, in order to uh, confuse you um, and lead you to 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 transact with those uh, like phishing addresses, so it's it's important to be careful about that. But you know, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, so yeah, um, the, the the broader point was that uh, we are all sooner or later going to have to uh, understand what has been the performance of our portfolio and our history of transactions across chains. Uh, in order to prepare tax returns. And so I just wanted to remind everyone that there are a number of tools that are available uh, to monitor all your crypto positions associated with your self-custodial wallets, uh, and that support Kronos. Uh, so of course, there is crypto.com tax, uh, dbank.com, uh, but also a few ones that have announced support recently, uh, like accounting.com, uh, bitoc.org, and binox.co. Uh, so plenty of options to choose from and check out. All right, thanks for the sharing, Ken. All right, so moving on from you know, Kronos um, chain news, right, we go into the various projects, right? Um, but I mean, before that, we wanted to pass the time on to Charlotte as well, who will be giving a bit more insight on Kronos Accelerator, which is one of the you no know, flagship programs that Kronos is holding, right, to support the developers that are building on a chain. Right. So after Charlotte shares, then we will move on to you know, Matt from Minter and last but not least, Blue Wood from Argo. Right. So firstly, right on to you, Charlotte, to share more about Kronos Accelerator. Thank you, Jay. Um, hi, everyone. Yeah, great to be here. So I'm Charlotte. I am Head of Innovation Programs at Kronos Labs. Um, today, we want to talk a bit about the relaunch of the Kronos Accelerator. Um, we are now officially taking applications for Cohort 2. Um, so I suppose, yeah, first things first, what is the Accelerator? So for us, it's a, a three-month program um, accelerating the best teams in the Kronos ecosystem. So from a structural perspective, it takes course over 12 weeks, and we're looking to select between six to eight teams um, for this cohort. Um, all teams will receive $30,000 US dollars upfront to support growth. Um, the program will have a pretty heavy focus on fundraising at large. Um, there'll also be follow on opportunities for funding from the Kronos Ecosystem Fund and strategic partners like Crypto.com, uh, as well as access to many other leading investors, angels, and DAOs in Web3. Um, and then from an expertise perspective, there is a huge amount of hands-on support from mentors and advisors in all sorts of industry verticals, uh, some of the ones listed there. So token economics, legals, commercial, marketing, as well as fundraising. Um, you can see some of the previous partners listed below. We're in conversation with many of those as well as, as lots of other entities for this cohort who will be getting involved. Um, so then, yeah, so just a bit more detail on the programme at large. So it's split into three months. 
Um, and month one can be very intense. So it's where a large number of pitches and mental discussions happen and we'll really be fleshing out with teams what their value proposition will be and you know what's the best strategy in order to maximize their potential. Um, month two, so this is more about focusing and on knowledge and doubling down on product, um, uh, as well as kind of getting all of the building blocks in place. So thinking really rigorously thinking through token design, token economics, um, and kind of the, the key cornerstones of, of, the, of the team setup, um, as well as preparing for fundraising which will be the kind of primary focus, I would say, in month three. Um, so where we'll be doing lots of pitching, lots of thinking through partnership announcements, really kind of drumming up momentum for teams to really go out there and, and, and rally support from all sorts of different um, entities in the space. Um, and all of that program will take place through various different formats. Uh, they include kind of one-to-one -one discussions and mentorship, live workshops and fireside chats, uh, virtual networking. I think it's really important that uh, as well as kind of it being, you know, mentors talking to teams, it's kind of founder to founder experiences is really rich as well. Um, thinking through operational advisory will also be important. So working with um, the selected teams on their setup, there's all sorts of different grants, all sorts of different um, support that we can do in order to help that kind of infrastructure and, and structural setup. Um, and then finally, uh, it will end in a, a demo day and a, and a whole series of pitches to our network and beyond of um of entities and, and investors in the space. So um, then just moving on to what type of projects we will be looking for. Um, yeah, so I suppose worth saying we, we, we will be investing in the best teams building with Kronos kind of in, vertical agnostically. Um, I suppose just taking a step back, we ultimately want to deliver really scalable technology that's going to onboard the next billion users um, and we're going to do that whatever vertical through simplified easy access and user experiences that kind of lower barrier to entry and are kind of simply interesting and fun um, but if we split that into the three different areas of focus that we have um, categorized teams into um, first off I suppose is DeFi so We'll be looking for projects that are um, introducing new markets as well as increasing user friendliness, security and transparency. I think um, worth saying, I, I think that should be a focus here on innovation and real creativity. Um, you know, if you're kind of forking a, another protocol, why, what presents a, a new edge, a, a new competitive advantage? Um then moving on to the kind of GameFi, SocialFi space, I suppose this is really how do projects act as really powerful onboarding mechanisms for, for non-crypto native consumers. Um, and some of the, the themes around that uh, include things like infrastructure for brands and content creators, tooling, analytics. There's been a huge... Um, boom in kind of creativity around social five that could be a really interesting area um so lots of uh, lots of areas of growth that um you could capitalize on in that uh, theme and then finally on infrastructure so really here we're looking for projects focused on security uh self-custody and um enabling uh users to have a much better UX. So often that's through kind of abstraction of some of the complexities of their logon and an onboarding experience. Um, so yeah, I, I maybe maybe some of the specific themes I would be looking at is things around maybe decentralized, uh, securely de decentralized information, uh, how to navigate it, how to index it, how it updates di dynamically, um, and we can how we can effectively analyze it um, as well as there's a whole bunch of stuff in here um, we could talk all day on. But, yeah, I think um, across the board, you know, like I said, this is it, we are very much about looking at um, the uh, in, uh, agnostically looking at the best teams building within Kronos. So then maybe if you go on to the next slide, Jay.
Um, yeah, maybe uh, just I think we've kind of covered most of this, but I suppose just more specifically from a kind of team lens, um, we're looking for projects and founders who are experienced in their field, who are kind of driven, have real grit to build um, projects that are going to be very committed um, and resilient in, in this market um, from a kind of Kronos Fit perspective, we're looking for teams that will be doing a native launch on Kronos or planning to expand multi-chain to Kronos. Um, uh, and I think again, looking at kind of what are they what what are they going to bring for you know, bring new use cases for our community that are going to add new value. Um, and then uh, product stage more focused on kind of early MVPs. Um, if there is a working prototype or MVP, that's definitely a massive plus. Um, and then finally, kind of thinking about um, what is the new opportunity and competitive advantage that's going to drive traction um, and, you know, new users. Um, so finally, then key timings. So, uh, yeah, as I said, applications are officially open. Um, if you check out our website, so chronos.org forward slash accelerators, you can find out lots more information. Um, and the application form is on there as well as a whole host of, of uh, more information than what I've summarized today. Uh, applications close on the 24th of March. I would say, you know, it's always worth getting applications in early. There's always a, a, a rush at the end and it's good to get it early. You'll benefit from um, more time from our team to, to kind of be able to digest and, and review that application. Um, the program will officially kick off on the 24th of April. Um, that will be the start of the three month program. Um, and then that will end in the demo day, which will take place kind of early to mid July. Um, so yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Please check out the website um, to find out more. And if you're a team or if you know a founder or a team that you think would be right for the program, please encourage them to apply. Um, we would love to hear from them. Um, and, and if you're not, but you're all, all, we're also just really interested in, in the accelerator and what we're building, you know, we're really looking for partners and mentors. So follow this, uh, follow this space, um, and you'll see more detail on that and how you can get involved in other ways soon. Thank you, Jay. All right. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Charlotte. All right, so the, it's a very, very detailed sharing of the Kronos Accelerator program. And it's one of the flagship programs that us as a chain, right, have to support founders or developer teams that are building on the chain. Right, the other program that we have, it's the grants program, which has been running for more than a year already. Right, so if you are a developer that is looking and exploring your whether should you build on Kronos, right, feel free to have these programs as an entry point into the chain. And us as a partnerships team will reach out to you to see if there's a good fit. Okay, now let's move on to the various projects. I think a lot of people, uh, the Crow fam here, are excited to hear from these two projects today. Uh, firstly, uh, Matt, right, from Minted, how are you doing today? Good. Thanks, Jay, for the invite. And great to be here with yourself, Ken, and Charlotte, and Blue Oats. All right. Uh, Minted, you guys have been you know, growing in popularity over the past few months. I remember inviting you guys back in the AMA um, close to five months ago. And since then, you guys has grow, have grown quite a, quite a bit. All right. So perhaps you can you know, start off by giving a quick introduction about yourself and you know what has Maybe, maybe for someone who's hearing about Minter for the first time, right? what is Minter Network? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Jay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just, just to get started, a quick intro about myself for those of you who didn't get a chance to attend our MA previously. So my name is Matt. I am the Director for Brand and Business Partnerships at Minted. And in terms of my day-to-day, -day, I interact with various external stakeholders from different partners to creators to our various community members. And the goal is to really bring really interesting content and to develop fruitful collaborations to the Minted platform. And we, we do focus on not just our own marketplace, but also on supporting the rest of the ecosystem. So for example, um, the Argo team is a team that we're quite familiar with through our various collaborations. Um, 
just a quick shout out and pitch for, for the Argo team as well. On the Minted homepage, the banner has been updated recently to, to highlight the fact that they have an exciting new project that will be minting tomorrow. And so definitely pay attention to, to that one tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> and then at the same time, so besides working on these collaborations, I do also work very closely with our internal teams, for example, our product team, product operations teams, to make sure that our platform and our services kind of meet the needs of our various external stakeholders. And then, you know, that way all the input kind of gets funneled into the planning processes. And hopefully then our roadmap is shaped in such a way that it you know, really helps to meet the expectations of the community overall. Um, so that's a little bit about me. And I guess with a, in terms of the introduction to Minted, I think most people probably know by now, hopefully, that Minted is an NFT marketplace on the Kronos chain. Um, but we are not only on Kronos chain, but also on Ethereum. So that's been one of the key things that has differentiated us from kind of the get-go of when we launched back in August, is that we are multi-chain. We support both Ethereum and you know, the EVM ecosystem, as well as Kronos, which is also compatible with the Cosmos ecosystem. Um, and but you know, in terms of how we like to think of ourselves, is that we want to think of ourselves as kind of the digital bazaar of wonders, where anyone can go to discover, trade, and find NFT gems. And the the goal is to have you know that really polished and you know delightful user experience, so that it's easy and fun to to trade NFTs. And at the same time, we, we really do hope that people find it to be rewarding as well, both in terms of you know, growing your own collection of NFTs, um, being able to you know, trade with others. Um, and we also have you know, additional features such as the listing rewards and staking vaults to, to you know, make that experience even more rewarding and delightful. All right, uh, well, thanks for the introduction. Uh, so Mint, so the NFT vertical on Kronos, it's one of the, if not the largest vertical on, on Kronos right now. Right? And it's because the community on Kronos, Crowfam, right? it's huge. Most of them are huge advocates for the NFTs and you know, huge lovers of, of buying or minting or trading NFTs. Right? But you know, there exist multiple marketplaces um, in the ecosystem today, right? both on Ethereum and Kronos. Right? Ethereum, there are so many like OpenSea, uh, looks rare. Uh, Blur and then on Kronos, um, we have one of the most OG marketplaces, Ibisus Bay. Uh, we have Crosi, we have Tofu NFT. So how is Minted, you know, positioning yourself? How are you guys differentiating yourself from you know, other marketplaces? Yeah, so I think um, one of the key differentiators is the fact that we are multi-chain. Of course, not all some of the marketplaces that you've mentioned do support other chains as well. Um, not all of them, so. It's something that we we do you know pride ourselves on um and then i think the other key point is that we are very focused on having a polished and safe user experience so we all of our contracts are fully audited uh, we take an allow list approach in terms of the collections that are be, that are actually listed on minted so that doesn't mean that every collection is going to make you 10 million dollars uh, but it does mean that we tried our best to prevent there being you know, kind of scam collections on, on the platform for listing purposes and then i think another key differentiator that we have is you know our our connection to the crowfam uh, community in general not only do we have the strategic partnership with crypto.com um, and crypto.com nft but i think you know being connected to kind of slabs, being connected to the rest of the Kronos ecosystem definitely helps us to, to tap into kind of the, the broader user base and the, the broader communities. And, you know, I think so far we've been quite focused on, on Kronos, um, the Kronos ecosystem itself. That's been kind of where we've been focusing our, our efforts on growth so far um, on, but I think the, the goal over time is definitely to kind of tap into the, the broader Ethereum and uh, ecosystem as well, and to kind of bring these different communities together. And I think Minted is a great place to kind of bring everyone together and show show the Ethereum users what's on Kronos and vice versa. Mm. And just now you, you briefly mentioned about you know, listing rewards, staking vaults, right? And if a user goes to Minted, 
right now, let's say they go to your website now, right? What can they do uh, in order to you know, check out all these different kind of features? Maybe you can give a quick sharing about that. Yeah, of course. So in terms of the, the onboarding experience for Minted, I think it's relatively similar to other Web3 dApps. So you go to minted.network and then you can connect your wallet at that time. We, we support, you know, MetaMask, Crypto.com, DeFi wallet. And recently we've also done an integration with Brave wallet as well. So if you're a Brave user, um, it's pretty easy for you to use Minted as well. And once you've done that, you're able to pretty easily um, do, you know, a number of different things. Like you mentioned, Jay, for example, you can participate in what we call listing rewards. And so this is a mechanism to basically encourage, you know, buying and selling of NFTs um, on our platform. And it's a way to make sure that you know, by supporting the platform, you are rewarded as part of that experience. Uh, the process is fairly straightforward. You just list NFTs um, the way you would on other marketplaces. Uh, but for popular collections, um, those that have the top trading volume uh, across different platforms, will be eligible for training rewards on, for listing rewards on any given day. And so <clears throat> on Kronos, we have the top 10 collections each day, as well as a few uh, different projects that we collaborate with that receive boosted points. And so you basically just list and then um, on a daily basis, the rewards are calculated and you get rewarded with MTD tokens. Now with MDD tokens, you can then stake those into our MTD vaults. And that way you'll be able to both earn a yield on your deposits. And then you will also get to participate in profit sharing from the platform. And so in terms of the service fee that is um, charged on the NFT transactions, half of the, half of the service fee actually goes back to all the stakers of MTD. So that, that revenue is redistributed across supporters of Minted. All right. Um, so we have received a couple of questions directed towards Minted. I'll just pull them up right now since you are talking about this topic. All right. So the first, the first question, it's from Texas, Hoda Crow. Right. Um, and it's on the topic of the MTD token. Right? How will MTD token be used in the future as described in the light paper as a governance token? And the second question is, will we see Minted accept other tokens as payment? Right? Uh, maybe you refer to MTD as a form of payment. Cool. Uh, yeah, thanks for the questions, Texas Holo Crow. So for your first question in terms of the MTD token being used in the future as a governance token. So at the moment, it is not being used for governance. Um, but the, the idea is as Minted gets more mature over time, as kind of more of the baseline building is done, then what we'll do is we'll open up kind of the, the development roadmap more and more to the community at large. And so, for example, um, we've been kind of talking internally about how we're going to do this in the future. And at the moment, it's still a bit early, but, you know, you can imagine a, a situation where you have a bit of a Kanban board sort of community board where different um, features or initiatives are proposed, and then certain ones are vetted um, before being you know, put to vote by, let's say, holders of MTD tokens to uh, be then worked on by the dev team. And so that process is not in place yet. We're still a little while away from that because there's still a lot of basic foundational stuff for us to do. But as we um, yeah, get more mature, we will, and we definitely want to open up that process to, to the community at large. And that is not to say that we, we aren't listening to the community today because we, we absolutely are, um, whether it's on Discord or Twitter, we are you know, always monitoring those channels and, and our product managers are, are paying close attention to what everyone is saying to, to determine kind of how to adjust or tailor the roadmap to, to everyone's needs. Okay, hope that uh, answers your question, Texas Order Crow. Uh, one more question for you, Matt. Oh, we have, um, oh, sorry, we have, we have the second question as well yeah. there that I didn't answer yet. Um, right, yeah. That's right. 
I think it was about it was about using MTD tokens, right? Oh yes. So, okay. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Please so, go. yeah. So for the moment, we we are not accepting MTD tokens for payment yet. Uh, obviously, on the marketplace, we accept Crow for the Kronos chain transactions, and then we accept Ether for the Ethereum chain transactions. Uh, we are constantly thinking about how to expand the utility of MTD tokens. And, and that is something that the team is thinking about this quarter actually is kind of the next steps for using MTD tokens. So um, I don't have any details that I can share just yet, but definitely um, stay tuned for, for more details in the future. Okay, so no no alpha leak today, but you know, stay tuned uh, to your communication channels on Discord and Twitter for the you know, latest updates on minted right uh, one other question and this is from a community project um from good driver reward token All right how can we get our nft listed on minton's minted site uh, thanks and remember let's grow let's grow indeed um it's actually fairly easy to get listed on minted so if you go to our help center on minted.network there's a link at the bottom to the help center and from there, you just need to go to the section that says selling my NFTs, and there's a link for platform listing. And basically, you just need to fill out a quick form, provide some information, provide you know, some images for the collection pages, and then one of our team members will, will review that. And assuming that it kind of you know, checks all the boxes, then they will get you listed. So yeah, check out the help center for the form. Okay, uh, thanks so much for sharing, Matt. Uh, I think you have given a very detailed overview about yourself, about Minted, what you guys have been up to. Right? And definitely looking forward to seeing you guys grow more on the chain. Right? And today, uh, let's pass the time on to you know, Blue Oats from Argo, uh, our final guest for the day. Right? Uh, Blue Oats, how are you doing today? Cool, thanks, Ray. Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so... I guess just to just to begin with, uh, I'm Blue Oats, uh, so I'm a dev at Argo. Um, so I guess I'm kind of in charge of like full stack, um, front end and the back end. Um, but as a team, I think the community is pretty familiar with Argo. Uh, we're just a team of builders, <clears throat> um, and yeah, so we started our journey off uh, on the Chrono chain uh, in June 2020, 2022. Sorry, uh, and it's been a it's been a while, right? <laughs> So we've kind of established a lot of like a successful partnerships with major protocols on Kronos uh, and kind of expanded from DeFi to NFTs with our Argonauts NFT collection. Um, uh, we've been expanding our product and community greatly uh, and now uh, moving into the NFT and uh, GameFi arm. Yeah. Yeah, you guys you know, have been making a lot of news on, on Twitter, especially in the past a uh, few weeks, right? And you know, perhaps for users who might not be too familiar with with Argo, maybe you can first start to share like how, how did you? So what what was your origin journey on Kronos Chain, right? Uh, and how did how did you how did you guys do this pivot into into gaming? Yeah, so I think Argo started out. Uh, so we we started out as a liquid staking protocol, um, kind of as a uh, key pillar of DeFi in Kronos, on the Kronos chain, uh, providing a way for users to kind of stake their Crow uh, uh, and have the liquid, deri de liquid derivative, B Crow, uh, kind of earn yield on both of them at the same time. Um, and kind of once we had our foot in the door with uh, liquid staking, we decided to kind of enter a little bit of the NFT space to better engage our community. Uh, kind of with with the NFT collection Argonauts, right? Um, giving a way for our community to represent themselves, uh, and you know, creating a stronger community in general. Right, and just now Matt briefly mentioned about you guys having an upcoming um, mint and product update, uh, which you guys have been you no know, trending on Twitter for the past week. Um, so I believe it's your latest product called Atlantis and it's your venture into gaming. Right, perhaps for a user who might not have heard of you know this new product before, can you give a bit of insight into what you guys are building? 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, th thanks, Matt, for for all the support. Um, uh, so yeah, if you've been following our Discord and Twitter, uh, there's quite there's been quite a bit of hype. Uh, with our latest kind of like expansion, uh, into GameFi called Atlantis. Um, so Atlantis is kind of our take on GameFi, which is a play to earn, play to own, strategy resource management game. Um, and it's it's all completely on chain. Um, so players can kind of, it's kind of like play to own, which is, it, the reason why we say play to own is because uh, players can kind of upgrade uh, their NFTs uh, and ultimately kind of monetize their time and hard work into the game as they upgrade uh, uh, their NFTs. Um, the reason why it's kind of it's kind of special is because um, we decided to incorporate, uh, we put a lot of time into like incorporating uh, dynamic NFTs this time uh, with dynamic ERC 721s and ERC uh, 1155s. Um, so these planets will all be upgraded on chain uh, to kind of get, like create dynamic Im images uh, as you progress in the game. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll be holding the min for the, the, the initial min for the Atlantis planets uh, tomorrow uh, at 2 p.m. UTC. Um, so yeah, keep your keep keep your eyes out for it. Um, and uh, as for our partnership with Minted, uh, the the planets will have like uh, ten listing rewards points uh, for the two for the first two weeks post mint. All right, I think let's dive into the feature a little bit, right? Just you said you guys are working on your know, dynamic uh, NFTs. Uh, you know these new features of the NFTs. What can users look out for, right? So what what's the dynamic? What's so dynamic about you know the NFTs that will be in your game? Yeah, so that's that's, that's a great question. Um, so for 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 the first collection, which would be for the planets, uh, planets can be upgraded and leveled up. So, uh, specific metadata attributes uh will change. And, and the image of the, the planets will change itself as well. So as uh, users kind of play and engage with the game, uh, the planets would level up. And as the planets level up, um, the image uh, of the NFT itself would change and you kind of get more rewards uh, as your attribute, kind of like as your, as your level increases. Um, but on top of the planets, we have other, other NFTs installed such as spaceships and equipments that will uh, be dynamic as well. So for spaceships, uh, or I guess for, for equipments, um, they can kind of be combined and upgraded uh, to improve the stats of the different equipments that are available. Um, and, and they themselves would have dynamic images as well. Um, and then lastly, for spaceships, uh, they can be equipped with equipments and uh, the stronger the equipments, uh, the images themselves would change as well. Um, yeah, and I'd like to point out that most of these have already been kind of, we've already completed development on them. So it's mostly QA work right now. Um, and we're really, really excited to kind of go live uh, with this. Right. So is there like an estimated time frame that you guys are expecting, like the Crow fam can look forward to for this product launch? Yeah, so uh, with the mint starting tomorrow, uh, the game, we are expecting the game to go live by Q1. Um, so yeah, really excited to share this with the community. All right, then um, all the best for you know the mint. And you know, once again, disclaimer that if you are a CoFam user listening into this um, stream, right, do your own research uh, and don't just blindly ape into uh, any project, right? It's always important to find out more about what the project is, is doing, what's their roadmap, right? Who is the team behind the project, uh, etc. Um, yeah, so thanks so much for sharing uh, Blue Oats. So I'm just looking through the comments. There are a couple of more questions that we have. Uh, there's a question from Dave Robinson uh, who asks, and this is a question you know, directed at minted right um so matt um so this question i will just read it out first All right so this question it's how are minted proposing to address metadata leaks in the future 
right? Um, so I think this is something that uh, I, I believe will be very crucial for the crew from down the road. And just wondering how is Minted planning to you know, secure this uh, feature? Yeah, of course. So I, I think the I think David was it. Thank you very much first for your question. Um, I think the first thing that we want to recognize is we did have a, a metadata issue when we were launching the the eyeball games drop recently. Um, the mint was actually very successful on on the launch pad. I think that went off without a hitch. But in terms of the the reveal process, we did run into uh, a small issue with the metadata and. Um, we, you know, discovered the issue together with the eyeball team, and we took immediate action to to kind of rectify the situation, um, both by just moving up the reveal time, and then by you know trying to provide a bit of compensation for the inconvenience um, experienced by some users. And so, um, first, I'm, I'm glad that we were able to kind of take swift action, but. I think secondly, and this is probably what you're trying to get to, is <clears throat> what we're going to do in the future about it, right? And I think the key here is that um, we have identified kind of why this happened in the first place. And so we are, you know, showing up the processes internally and also how we kind of work with uh, our partners around the reveal process to make sure that it's, you know, very planned out and organized and also that the uh, metadata um, is actually not made available at all period until we're about to update the, the contract to, to reveal it. And so, yeah, this has definitely been a learning experience for, for us. And um, we definitely appreciate everyone's um, understanding and patience with the process. And um, we are very much forward to kind of, you know, making sure that it doesn't happen again in the future. Okay, uh, right. Thanks for the response, and I believe like the Crow Fam, it's ultimately this is a journey of growth, right? Uh, and we're very excited to see you know, more and more projects that might be potentially working with uh, with you, and then having a very safe mint uh, down the road. Okay, I think that's all of the questions that we have for today. And if that's the case, that means we are going to wrap up the Chrono stream for today. Right, once again, thanks so much to all our speakers, like Ken, um, Blue Oats, Matt, and Charlotte for all your time uh, to come up to the stream to share. Right, and also thank you to all of the listeners, the viewers who have you know, spent the past 45 minutes in this stream to listen to the latest updates. Right, so we do this stream right every two to three weeks. So stay tuned, follow us on Kronos Chain on Twitter, on YouTube to stay tuned to the next stream. All right, so thanks everyone and have a good morning, good evening, good night. Cheers. All right, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Thank bye. You.